Tonight on Canyons News, we start with the local strike that has Santa Clarita residents searching for new routes. Then we take a look at an event that brought Native American culture closer to the Santa Clarita community. And finally, we take an inside look at a sport that is gaining momentum around the nation. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Sam Rabadi. And here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. The war in the Middle East has escalated to new heights of violence as the terrorist organization Hamas launched a surprise attack against Israel this past Saturday. It's a conflict that has claimed over 1,900 lives on both sides. While this fighting is taking place a world away, its repercussions are being felt right here in Santa Clarita at the Rally for Israel held yesterday at City Hall. Hundreds of people gathered in front of City Hall draped in Israeli flags and holding up signs to show support for the Jewish nation in this time of crisis. But the event also drew a counter rally of Palestinian supporters across the street praising the actions of Hamas and calling for the end of the Jewish state. And while a few people let their tempers flare, both sides stayed mostly peaceful, letting their voices be heard. We're supporting you and that no matter what, like we have our back and we know that we're going to fight because we've done it before. We've gone across the Holocaust and now we're doing this. We can get through everything and Israel will continue and remain. And, yeah. No one's giving a voice to the Palestinian victims and children who have been brutalized for the last 75 years under occupation in Gaza, which is an open air concentration camp. And it's only when, unfortunately, a tragedy happened to Israeli citizens that there's any news coverage of the Israeli-Palestinian ongoing conflict. Although, although more than 7,000 miles away, some Armenian students here at COC are feeling their homeland's pain. Nareg Chadkudian explains the growing conflict in Armenia. Green hills and blue skies on campus at College of the Canyons, but for some of the college's students, their relatives thousands of miles away are going through some terrible times. The conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, also known as Artsakh, reached new heights this past month. Artsakh was Armenian. Stalin gave it to Azerbaijan. So the whole reason that this entire thing is happening the way it is is because Everyone is currently recognizing a border drawn by a man who murdered 20 million people. Although there have been attempts of peacekeeping from other countries, the warfare between Armenia and Azerbaijan has continued since the collapse of the Soviet Union. After the end of their war in 1994, Armenia was victorious in Artsakh, but in recent years, Azerbaijani troops are the ones singing praises in the mountainous region. While troubled times were happening far away, Armenians here felt their own pain. COC alumnus Anthony Aroyan spoke on the pain he felt watching from afar. Uh, the emotions change like every day. One day it's, you know, very solemn. Some days you're just angry because you feel like, sometimes you feel like there's nothing you could do about it. Uh, there's a sense of loneliness maybe that feels like we're kind of being left uh, by the rest of the world to kind of deal with this uh, ourselves. Armenians in Artsakh are suffering a humanitarian crisis, being reminded of the genocide they suffered in 1915 from the Ottoman Empire. Armenians here are reminded of that pain. I'm really sad about it. You know, I visited Armenia back in 2019, but then seeing how much has changed between now and then, and seeing that history is being repeated, and it's just not receiving enough coverage on the news, and not, so many, not that many people know about it, and I just think that... Um, terrible. Unsure of what the future holds for the Armenian people, Armenians all around the world are praying for better days. For Canyons News, I'm Narek Charkhadyan. Back here at home, thousands of Santa Clarita Valley residents are now looking for alternative modes of transportation as bus services have been shut down for the last three days due to a transit worker strike. Teamsters Local 572, which represents transit workers, went on strike Monday morning due to what they are calling a labor dispute. The city of Santa Clarita partners with MV Transportation for city bus services. Union members say that dispute, being in negotiations with MV for over a year, they have yet to receive a fair contract. 
not just the drivers, but the customer service representatives, the dispatchers, they want to pay them $500 to $1,500, not even a real wage increase. Who didn't get a wage increase in 22? And they're not going to get away with it. We're not going to let them get away with it. We told them that's a deal breaker. Today, Santa Clarita Transit began offering reduced prices for local routes 5, 6, and 12, as well as select routes for students who are trying to go to school. Students can find more information at SantaCaritaTransit.com. In more strike news, the WGA has officially ratified their deal with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. With striking actors back at the negotiating table, fans around the world are anticipating the return of their favorite TV shows and movies. But for those impacted, are left questioning if the picketing paid off. Canyon's news reporter Eli Kern has more under the reactions to the latest news from Hollywood. The 2023 writer's strike lasted 144 days and the dual strikes have cost Hollywood an estimated $6 billion. Now remember, writers are independent contractors for the most part, which means that you were, if, if you were building a house or if you were putting in a swimming pool as an independent contractor, that's four months of no work. The impact of that was felt close to home for some members of the community. Honestly, we um, go on strike, and then when the actors jumped on board and then the production completely shut down, that was the beginning of a work stoppage for, and in Santa Clarita, we have a lot of people who work in the film industry, and a lot of them suddenly found their jobs on hold. Despite working amongst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, some residents now found themselves in a difficult situation. It is a struggle. Um, there are food banks that have opened so generously to families like ours. Um, my kids grew up here. We come to the park here for many years being a resident of Santa Clarita. Now with the rise of the cost of gas and, and food and everything else, it makes it very, very rough. But for some, even assistance from community resources wasn't enough. Just a plain chocolate dip. I guess. Okay. With David finding himself opening up a stand at the Old Town Newhall Farmer's Market. We're all just trying to make a living to survive. Some of us are in the industry and some of us are not. But this is where I'm at. With stories like David's being common throughout the industry, it has left some to question if the strike was worth it. Everybody was without a paycheck for four months. The first question I ask everyone is, are you going to recoup what you lost over that four-month period? And a lot of people will not. Thanks to David, there was at least one sweet silver lining. Reporting for Kenya's News, I'm Eli Kern. Two Los Angeles County Sheriff deputies were critically injured from a fire and possible explosion at the Peter Pitches Detention Center in Castaic yesterday. According to officials, at 9.30 a.m., a fire started in a mobile training facility trailer during a live ordinance drill. The two deputies inside the trailer suffered burn injuries and were taken to Henry Mayo Hospital and are reported to be in critical but stable condition. Officials said no inmates were injured in the explosion and the facility was placed on lockdown while, while fire crews extinguished the flames. In the abundance of caution, the mobile ranges across the county have been temporarily closed while we assess the situation at the Pitches Detention Center and the trailer there. Sheriff's arson explosive detail are on scene and will fully investigate the origin and the cause of this fire. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department identified the academy of, of the Canyon student killed in a bike accident early Monday morning as 17-year-old Louis Barba. The crash happened at the intersection of McBean Parkway and Skycrest Circle shortly before 9 a.m. The crash is still under investigation and the driver involved in the incident remained on scene. COC's Chancellor Diane Van Hook released a statement yesterday evening expressing the devastating loss for a small student body and tight-knit staff. The Academy has made arrangements for additional counselors to be on hand to assist students who are grieving. COC students can also connect with the college's health center on both campuses from 9 to 6 Monday through Thursday and 9 to 1 on Fridays. 
and with what's going on in the world, and with what's going on in the world, here's Shalisa Curl Pun. Thank you, Sam. Here's a look at what's trending. In international news, Afghanistan experienced one of its most deadly earthquakes in a year. With a total of eight aftershocks, the earthquake was a magnitude of 6.3 and left at least 9,000 people injured and 2,000 people dead. The search for the victims of the earthquake still continues. In national news, Trump's bid to delay documents case was pushed back by prosecutors. Special counsel Jack Smith claims that there is no credible justification to delay Trump's trial until after the election. A facility was made available in Washington, D.C., where Trump and his lawyers will be able to review all evidence of the case, including the highly sensitive documents that will be available at the end of the week. For local news, the city of Santa Clarita's local public access television station is looking for a new home. With Santa Clarita setting its limit to $5.6 million towards the change, the city hopes the new space will benefit the community that uses this resource. The new home will the new home for the local station will introduce more collaborations, learning opportunities, and messages from local businesses. And that's what's trending. I'm Shalisa Curlpen. For more stories in, in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at canyonsnews.com. Back to you, Sam. With crime rates skyrocketing across Los Angeles County, the demand for law enforcement officers is at an all-time high. In hopes of inspiring a new generation to fill these jobs, students of the criminal investigation course were given an a, unique, a, a unique final exam. Students were given a recreated scene of a, of a drive-by shooting to investigate. Split into separate homicide teams, they were able to interview witnesses and collect evidence to aid in prosecuting a crime, showing that not every job in the justice system is enforcement. The criminal justice program is not just about law enforcement. The criminal justice system has you know, several components to it. It has the judiciary, it has corrections, it has you know, the investigations, the enforcement branch, and there's a lot of positions within, those, uh, within these fields that aren't all just police officers. When we return from break, Sandra Grable will give us a further look at more local news. Thanks, Sam. Here's what's coming up after the break from the Canyons Newsroom. The Alzheimer's Association journey to raise awareness one step at a time. And a local football coach's ultimate return to the field. So stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. The future is yours. So let College of the Canyons help you get ready, reset, and go for it. Get ready for transfer, the workforce, or take your skills to the next level. Reset your career and get back to work quickly. Go to college for $46 per unit, zero textbook cost class options, and apply for your share of financial aid. With convenient class times, flexible on-campus or online options, and free tutoring, the future is yours at College of the Canyons. Visit canyons.edu slash schedule. Welcome back to Canyons News. I'm Xander Grable, and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. The Canyon Country Community Day this, this past Saturday not only successfully put the city together, but also brought the community together. Canyons News reporter Shalisa Curlpun is here to tell us more. You may have seen them this past weekend along White's Canyon Road, or smelled them. Canyon Country Community Day volunteers spent this past Saturday remulching the city one scoop at a time. So we are here today at the Canyon Country Community Day and it's a big um, volunteer and community event. So we have members of the community stopping by to drop off bulky items and also uh, take advantage of some free mulch and resources. And then we also have volunteers coming out and doing a large scale mulching project along White's Canyon. Now, if you are here and you plan on using tools, you must be registered as a volunteer. At this one-day cleanup event, volunteers of the Santa Clarita Valley came out to remulch the city from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Their hope? To give back to the community they take so much pride in. I think it's often overlooked 
like I said before, of like helping out right in our communities. You know, sometimes we tend to give back in monetary ways and sit back, but I think this is a great way to put feet in the ground and just really show up for our community. Not only are volunteers rebuilding the Santa Clarita Valley, but they are also contributing toward a team that makes the community a better place. I think it's important because it really builds a sense of community um, and it creates a community where everyone is all hands on deck and they take pride in their community. I think that's huge with volunteering. It's really showing that you take pride in where you live and you're willing to volunteer your time to make the community not only better for you, but for everyone who lives in it. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpen. This past weekend, Santa Clarita Valley residents gathered in support of those with Alzheimer's and their caretakers for a fundraiser. Reporter Jaden Johnson has more. Last Saturday, hundreds rallied together in Bridgeport Park in support of the Alzheimer's Association's Walk to End Alzheimer's. It is a fundraiser with the intention of using the money they raised to support those suffering with Alzheimer's and to fund research towards methods of prevention, treatment, and maybe one day even a cure to the disease. So we are one of 600 walks in communities around the nation, and the Walk to End Alzheimer's is the largest fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association. Before the walk, the event consisted of a ceremony in which the association announced they reached their fundraising goal of a whopping $150,000. They also took the time to honor those who had been lost to Alzheimer's with many raising flowers that represented loved ones through the moment of silence. Soon after, participants began their walk, which was two miles long around the park, each one with their own story to tell about their connection to Alzheimer's and other dementias. Walkers weren't the only ones with a personal connection to the cause. Many volunteers and staff have their own stories to tell as well. My great aunt suffered from Alzheimer's and passed away about 12 years ago. And so it touched my family very personally. But it's also one of those things that these are types of diseases and illnesses that can be cured with the right research and development. Despite Brian's personal loss, he stays both optimistic and determined to help those who have Alzheimer's and their caretakers as well. While the cure has yet to be found, he tells those that are struggling to never give up hope. Keep fighting. Keep fighting every single day. We are getting so close to being able to find a cure, but also to extend your quality of life and just stay strong. We know how difficult this battle is, but we've got your back and we're out here every single day working tirelessly. For Canyons News, I'm Jaden Johnson. The annual Heart of the West Pow Wow celebrated its 29th year with a dancing celebration for the community. Canyons News reporter Natalie Perez is here to tell us more. The heart of Santa Clarita is beating to a new drum. The 29th annual Heart of the West Pow Wow, hosted by the Fernandino Tatavian Band of Mission Indians, brought the community together to Heart Regional Park for a weekend of crafts, food, and of course, celebration. Uh, this is our ancestral land, and this powwow has been in existence. It'll be the 29th year of this powwow, and our tribe has been asked to co-host it this year. So we're really excited about that. The event was hosted together with the Los Angeles County Department of Parks and Recreation to bring Native American families together and to give spectators the opportunity to experience the culture and heritage with Native dances and hymns. Our nations are different tribes. It's given to us so that we can share our knowledge, share our stories. Vendors were able to set up their booths alongside the celebration, with booths ranging from Native American artisans to information on local groups. Um, so yeah, we're here for um, Outreach and School Relations, part of College of the Canyons. Um, we're representing our Native American Indigenous Alliance here. Um, this is the powwow, so it's just an event uh, for the community. Um, just to talk about, you know, Native American heritage. The Native American and Indigenous Alliance is one of 10 alliance groups at College of the Canyons. Information can be accessed on canyons.edu where meeting times and faculty are listed. This is our ancestral land. We are the first peoples of this land. And it's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of it. Just come out and, you know, meet us. For Canyons News, I'm Natalie Perez. Located in Newhall is home of legendary silver screen cowboy William S. Hart arguably the most influential Western actor, actor of all time. 
And as Anthony Riley tells us, Hart Park ensures that his legacy and impact will be remembered for generations to come. Tucked away in Newhall is the preserved estate of legendary Western film star William S. Hart, arguably the most influential silver screen cowboy of all time. Like how our grandparents, you know, remember John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. Very bad, badass, you know, shoot up a, you know, a saloon kind of thing. Hart was really the first of that. Pioneered the Western genre, if you really want to get down to it. Even with his horse, Fritz, you had Bill Hart and Fritz who were really the first of that Hollywood cowboy horse duo. Though William S. Hart is no longer here, the Hart Mansion still stands as a reminder of his legacy. Hart Park is really a unique gem. Um, because of the fact it is, you know, a silent film star's preserved estate. The benefit of the American public of every race and creed, which he wanted that put in, this is 1946. Segregation was still a big deal in, in, in our country. With the help from volunteers, Hart Park has been able to preserve many of Hart's personal photographs as well as letters, from legendary air women to historic lawmen. I also have to understand too, he was friends with as I like to say, everybody we read about in the history books today. I know for a f we know for a fact Amelia Earhart's been here twice. Hart Park is filled with many great amenities, from the ranch house to the bison. Unfortunately, the most prized attraction, the Hart Mansion, where the museum is located, has been closed since the COVID pandemic. At the city of Santa Clarita is looking to take over trans uh, ownership of the park. So that's why the, uh, the house has been closed for three years now. Um, basically, the museum is in transfer. But we've been doing fine here for 65 years. For Canyons News, I'm Anthony Riley. The sounds of rock and soul music filled the sky at Castaic Lake, and Santa Clarita residents had a blast. Canyons News reporter Christopher Casey takes us to where the music is at. With guitar strumming, and music in the air, that only means one thing. Rocktoberfest has come to Castaic. The event brings in amazing tribute bands, including rock and soul music bands from around Santa Clarita to hear them perform. KHUG FM's owner, Henry Urich, speaks his mind. It's important to keep the music alive, not only on the air, but with live music. And I went out and sought out some of the very best bands that provide a tribute. This event is for the nonprofit station, KHUG 97.5 FM, as it is ran by Yurik himself. With his love for the music, he makes it a big event to share the love of rock and soul to other fans, like Gary Goforth, who has loved rock and soul music for all of his life. The, the, the tribute bands were really good. I, I enjoyed the, uh, their, their music. Um, it's a beautiful atmosphere here, being right here on the lake. So getting to see a you know really good tribute band to them is really nice. It has also brought attention to tribute bands like Gypsy Dreams bass guitarist Will Roberts, whose beginning started with an observation. When I joined the band as the bass player, she looked at me and she said, "Hey, you kind of look like Lindsey Buckingham. So, do you play guitar?" I said, "Yes, I can play guitar too." She said, "Let's do a Fleetwood Mac tribute and put together a whole band." If you wish to support KHUG and local or popular artists for any future endeavors, you can listen to them on 97.5 FM or go to their social media to show your support. For Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. From hedgehogs to monkeys, a local animal sanctuary is taking a stand against removing exotic animals from their habitats. Animal Tracks, located in Agua Dulce, California, has many exotic animals filling its sanctuary. Most of these animals come from illegal pet trades, as well as being rescued from wildlife. So Animal Tracks is a 501c3 nonprofit that is built for taking in exotic animals that need a forever home for a whole bunch of reasons. Injured wildlife, pet trade, confiscations. Ever since starting back in 2002, Animal Tracks has continued to teach people about the dangers of having exotic animals as pets. So most of the animals come to us from people who've gone out and bought this animal as a pet and decided, you know, I'm really not, really not set up for this. It smells, it's up all night, it bites. Um, really and truly, we want to get to you before you go to Vegas and buy yourself an animal and tell you what a good choice a dog or a cat is. 
Studies have shown that after people watch a video of a monkey and human interacting with each other, they believe they have what it takes to own one of these wild animals. I don't want people to come here and say, that was so amazing, I want to go get a monkey. Um, I want to touch their hearts. I want to inspire them to keep the world wild. Chrissy the baboon, a longtime resident of Animal Tracks, is a prime example of why wild animals should stay wild. This animal's a seed spreader, so her job is to grow the world's rainforest with her fecal matter. So if we took out all of the birds and monkeys and kinkajous and kawatamundis, it would be up to us to farm the world's jungles to keep them growing. And yet this animal can do it effortlessly. Animals have a huge impact on our global ecosystem and should be left in the wild or taken to places such as animal tracks to be properly taken care of. For Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. College of the Canyons athletics are heating up this fall. Jonathan Garcia has more. Thank you, Xander. Hello, everyone. Here's what's next from the sports desk. Cougar football is enjoying a successful season so far. Undefeated in the conference play and riding a three-game winning streak, the team completed a homecoming mauling of the Anano Valley Marauders, a game in which the Cougars threw for big gains downfield, created turnovers, and played smothering defense and once again ran the ball down their opponents' throats. Next, upcoming off a bye week, the Cougars are looking to sink their claws into the El Camino Warriors on the road tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pitching for Valencia High School Baseball is an unexpected teammate who is now stepping up to the mound for the USA national team. Our reporter, Katherine Brooke, met her on the pitch. Defying odds and tradition, this past summer, Valencia High School pitcher Cam Ely competed in the women's national team trials, earning herself a spot on the women's USA baseball team. Praying, I was crossing my fingers. Please let me say, hear Ely. Please say Ely. Please say Ely. They're going through the names. They hear Kelsey Whitmore, um, Beth Greenwood, Cam Ely, and they just moved past my name. But I, it was awestruck. I never thought I would hear my name, let alone at 17, be said by the Team USA head coach that I made the top 40 roster. But Cam's ball game started long before the winning pitch. I got into playing very young at the age of three. Turns out I actually hated my first year playing baseball. Um, my parents forced me to play another year, and I've never fallen out of love with it since. But being the only one with a braid comes with challenges of its own. You have to accept that you won't be accepted, and that has to be okay with you. Taking the leap of faith to do something you love rather than the thing that's supposed to be right, it means more than that. So take the leap of faith, try it out. If it's too much, then it's too much. But if it isn't, and you can push through, you will feel more accomplished than anything ever, I promise. Yeah! We're running right out. It's that mentality that makes her the player she is today. Everything that she tries to accomplish and puts, uh, puts to work, she's going to do. There were moments in games, even playoff games, where she'd kind of really break it all down and something I didn't even think about yet. So, I mean, it kind of really showed her maturity in the game, and uh, yeah, she's done a really good job for us. Now I'm out here playing high school baseball and on Team USA, it's a dream. Stepping to the mount for both Team USA and her high school comes with resilience as she proves to herself and future generations the place for women in this male-dominated sport. For Canyons News, I'm Katherine Brooke. Last night, the Bakersfield Renegades and the Cougars men's soccer team faced off for the first time this season, kicking off the first of 10 conference games for the Cougars. CLC looked to start their conference games with a winning record halfway done with the season with a 6-6 six and six record. The Renegades went back and forth with CLC on shots all game, coming up just short. This match is known for the heated rivalry between both teams and neither team lacked any physical effort. CLC's midfielder, Elijah Tejeda, was all across the field last night, attempting to help his defender, Daniel Corcion, for this wild goal assist attempt with Giovanni Escarrega. With a scoreless first half, the action did not stop there. From this defensive grudge match, even though both teams battled to the end, resulting in a tie. 
we held the ball better in the opponent's half of the field tonight um, with a little bit more consistency. Now we just, we just need to make that final that final connection that creates the scoring chances. Um, and, and I think we'll, we'll be where we need to be. CLC looks to fire up the offense next game on the road against Citrus College. Hart High School football coach Rick Harrington takes the field knowing what he is up against. After decades on the sideline, he is rarely caught off guard until the day everything changed. Sam Rabati has more. You're looking for that quarterback to keep the ball there too. Hart High School head football coach Rick Harrington has been on the sidelines since 1978, when he was just 18 years old. You could say he has given his heart to the game he loves, but it was his heart that gave out last April and he needed to be rushed to UCLA hospital where doctors weren't sure Rick would live. When you came in here, I thought to myself, there's no way. I mean, and then the other guy said, yeah, I, we both, we, we didn't think you were gonna make it. And I'm going, I'm glad you're wrong. <laughs> Rick's heart problems began when he had triple bypass surgery last November. After they told me that I was going to need a heart, you know, you worried a little bit going, you know, what could happen and stuff. But then it sort of, I never really thought of it that much. I felt pretty confident. When older brother Mike Harrington, who is the former legendary heart head football coach and has shared the sidelines with Rick for 38 years, heard the news, he feared the worst. Is he going to be able to walk? Is he going to be able to talk? Is he going to be able to live? Uh, uh, and so, you know, daily trips uh, down to UCLA to, to see how the progress are going, that's, uh, uh, you know, that, that was um, uh, hard emotionally to go down there. Rick was put in a coma for eight days and spent nearly two months in the hospital recovering. Right, here we go. One, two, three. Trying to get up and walk, that was the hardest part, you know, trying to get up and walk. And it took me day after day to get a little bit farther, a little bit farther with a walker. I still had a walker then. But just going through that is just, oh, it was terrible. It was terrible, yeah. With a new heart and a second chance at life, Coach Rick Harrington knows exactly how he is going to live. You got a new heart, you don't, you don't, you don't know when that's going to last. So you got to, every day has got to be great. You got to try and make every day great. And that does it for our sports segment. I'm Jonathan Garcia. Back to you, Xander. Thank you, Jonathan. Have you ever been over, a friend, over at a friend's house and noticed them trying to throw a bag filled with corn into a small hole that's on the board and you thought to yourself, well, what is this? Well, it's cornhole and it's reaching heights far beyond your friend's backyard. Sam or body has more. Meet Corey Ballard who turned the backyard holiday tradition into a thriving career. He's part of a local group that meets every Thursday night to play cornhole. Not familiar with the sport? Not many were until the pandemic brought it front and center. During COVID, it was a big time for cornhole. Um, sports was canceled, events were canceled. The only live sports on for a four month period, there was cornhole three days a week on ESPN. Um, so that is what really gave the ACL their huge takeoff. That was their, their trampoline. And that bounce is being felt far and wide across the sport. You know, we have a lot of people that have battled different Ill, Ill, ailments or illnesses, and there's a few pros that are 14, 15. We got one as young as 11. Male, female, they can still come out and still throw bags and, not, and have a good time with, with a good group of people. In Cornhole, the boards are 27 feet apart. Three points for a bag that goes through the hole, and one point if it lands on the board. First to 21 wins. But the math of turning pro isn't so simple. There are over 100,000 active players, but only 256 play professionally. And it's that dedication that eventually led Corey to quit his job. Whatever you guys are thinking as far as talent wise, if you guys think it's amazing, it's 10 times more than what you're thinking. Like, it's no joke, um, the best in the world. But Corey's connection to the sport runs deeper than just tossing bags. Oh, and he... My dad needed a kidney transplant. He just got it back in uh, back in April. 
but last year we had a uh, fundraiser tournament for him. Over 250 people showed up, raised over $15,000, um, and that's just the Cornell community around here locally. Um, when somebody goes down, we all step up for each other. And stepping up is just one of Corey and Mark's objectives. Both hope to grow the game into its ultimate goal of becoming an Olympic sport. For Canyons News, I'm Sam Rabadi. Well, that does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Xander Grable. And remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, canyonsnews underscore coc, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.